What is up, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones, and we're here for another THI podcast. Exciting THI podcast is obviously earlier today. Uh, about, I guess we learned Carolina's fate about 40, 45 minutes ago at this point. Yeah. The NCAA tournament selection Sunday was unveiled. And as I'm sure most people know by now, because Carolina fans watching this, Carolina did secure a number one seed in the West region. We'll start out in Charlotte on Thursday as well, which is also another extreme positive for the Tar Heels. And we'll play the the winner of the play-in game between Howard and Wagner with whoever wins that, obviously being the 16 seed. Um, it, it, obviously, I think we talked about it. It was kind of, there was a little bit of, you know, debate on whether or not Carolina would secure that one seed with the loss to, to NC State on Saturday night. We'll talk a little bit more about that game later on too. Iowa State maybe sneaking into that one seed, but obviously Iowa State was announced that they would be a two seed before, way before Carolina was announced, and that kind of secured Carolina's fate in the West region. So, AJ, I, I said it. I think I tweeted it out. I think it's well deserved for North Carolina. I think when you look at the regular season product that Carolina put out, they should be a number one seed, despite what happened on Saturday night against the Wolfpack. And again, I think everything kind of worked out like everybody expected it to. So, what's your thoughts on on Carolina securing that number one seed in the West region? Yeah, what they had going for them versus uh, uh, Iowa State is the Iowa State had. There, there's, there's non-conference strength, uh, schedules, the strength of schedules, like in the three hundreds, they had mm-hmm. nine quad four wins. Carolina had five and that's a big difference. Carolina played, uh, Carolina had, well, they were nine and three in quad one games. Uh, Iowa state won 10 quad one games, but they played more. And, and I think the road record, Iowa state was five and five in true red games. Carolina was eight and two. And one of them was a one point loss. The other one, they lost to a team that shot, it's a really good program, had its best shooting night in half a century. So I think uh, Carolina deserved the one the one seed out west. I think they deserve to start in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And they said something on TV about, well, maybe they would have been higher as a one seed and not the four overall if they didn't lose last night to State. I don't buy that because I think that Purdue, UConn, and Houston have been so entrenched for so long that Carolina just kind of was the last guy to come into that one line. And it really happened. It really kind of flipped the switch last Saturday when they won at Duke. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that they have a really favorable bracket. If you're a Carolina fan, you cannot be disappointed with anything about this. Other than the fact they got to travel to LA, it's Mm -hmm. a long travel, but Oh, well, last time they were in LA, by the way, in the tournament was 2015 sweet 16 loss to Wisconsin, the Wisconsin team that beat that unbeaten Kentucky club and then uh-huh. lost to Duke in the national title game. Um, that was a really good Wisconsin team. And that was sort of a growing point for that Carolina club that they took in the following year and the year after. Mm-hmm. Most of that group played in two straight national championship games, winning one of them. So in a way, L.A. was a feeding point for that. But I, I like the one seed. I think it's fair. I think they've earned it. They didn't mention the fact that Carolina has more one seeds than anybody in history. I think that's 22 now. Mm-hmm. So Pretty that's record. a nice little, that's a nice little thing. That'll come out in the Kirsch notes tonight. I'm sure yeah. where Steve Kirshner sends his, um, his uh, Moby Dick sized um, <laughs> palette of notes, which is awesome. Cause he's the yeah, best in the business doing that stuff. Yeah, he's fantastic. So that's a, that's a little notch. Like I love history. I'm a historical buff in sports. I love numbers and there are 21 final fours more than anybody else. So I like when, You know, if they add stuff like that, I like to point it out because I love the connections to history Mm -hmm. and they have a lot of it. And they're going to possibly meet a team in the second round that they have a lot of history with in the tournament, but it doesn't go the green team's way. It always ends up going Carolina's way. And I'm sure the last thing Tom Izzo wants to do is play North Carolina in the state of North Carolina. He's kind of been there, done that before. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we'll see what happens. They may end up having to play Mississippi State, not Michigan State in the second round. So well-deserved. The mm-hmm. committee made the right call. They made some poor calls in some other areas. It's always going to happen. Yeah, and let's face it. There were a lot of bids stolen here in the last 36 hours. Mm-hmm. So uh, if, if, if none of the upstarts would have won these major tournaments and get like an NC state, Pitt would have gotten in looks like. Mm-hmm. So Pitt's not in, should be in 
I'm not going to dwell on that because I think pick and win games in this field. Mm-hmm. But uh, North Carolina is in. That's who we cover. And I think the Tar Heels have a great bracket, man. They really do. Yeah, I want to talk about the bracket a little bit more. We were talking about it a little bit off camera. I think I've seen a little bit of mixed reaction on, on on social media and on the message board so far with kind of how people feel about Carolina's West region and the difficulty of it. I I, I think it's a pretty favorable side of the bracket or side of the uh, most favorable region, I should say, for the Tar Heels. Just to run through the other uh, the top four seeds in it obviously starts with number one, North Carolina, number two, Arizona. It, it, <laughs> Well, it was always going to happen, AJ. Arizona was always going to be in Carolina's bracket when Caleb Love transferred out there. And I'm just praying that they play because that would be absolutely fantastic. And that would obviously be an Elite Eight matchup. It would be great to see. Well, they wouldn't if Carolina's in another region. I mean, it, it fits. And Arizona deserves to be in the yeah. West region. They've yeah. earned that. Yeah. And they get to play in L.A. And by the way, when Carolina was in L.A. in 2015, Arizona was also there. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I I can't remember who Wisconsin beat in that regional final. It may have been Arizona because I know I Arizona either, was in the yeah. building. Carolina had the first game, so the other game was going on when I was doing all my post game work. But the, Arizona belongs out there. They belong the two seed out there. It's totally deserved. Uh, I, I think if Carolina was the one in the South, if Houston struggled down the stretch and Carolina was the one there, or if UConn struggled down the stretch and Carolina was the one in the East. I, I don't think Arizona would be in those two regions. I don't think they're mm-hmm. setting this up as Caleb versus Carolina. I think it's Arizona versus Carolina. Caleb happens to be the best player on Arizona's team. So yeah. seriously, if Carolina was in the Midwest and Purdue fell apart, he got hurt and Purdue fell apart, they wouldn't have sent Arizona in the Midwest. However, it worked out beautifully for CBS and all the, <laughs> the TV people that count all the beans and the TV ratings gurus and all that stuff. Because if it is Carolina versus Caleb, that is going to have monster TV ratings. And uh, that will be amazing to see. A lot of stuff has to happen for that to come yeah. to fruition. Uh, personally, if Arizona gets to L.A., I look forward to seeing Caleb and tell them congratulations on a great year pac-12 player of the year versus the acc player of the year guys who have been buddies and I, and a lot of things have been mended i can say that with certainty mm-hmm. and i know that rj talked to him this past week wished him congratulations and caleb has said a lot of really nice things about carolina the last few weeks because he's been asked a lot about it as the tournament is coming and it looked like maybe they might be in the same region and also he passed a 2000 point mark so mm-hmm he was given an opportunity to talk about most of those points being scored in, you know, at Chapel Hill and what that did for him playing for Carolina and still being a part of that family. And people should never forget. He has one of the most iconic shots in UNC history and that's never going away. So that would be pretty cool. Although I think it'd be a lot more stressful on Caleb than it would anybody on the Carolina roster. That would be awful for him. I, 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 I would imagine he doesn't want to play Carolina. Probably not. I don't, I don't know if Carolina fans want that matchup either. Cause I think a lot of people are gonna be kind of torn on it, but for me, I want it. I, I need that in the elite. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Running through the other top four seeds, number three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you want me to have to write 600 Caleb love Carolina articles. I just, that's all it would be. Do you, you realize the circus? So people don't, that are listening, no watching, no, don't know that there would be an elite eight. So the day before the elite, people don't realize that there's more work to do in the day before NCAA tournament games and the actual day, the actual game. day. Yeah. There's a, there's a ton of media availability. The locker rooms open for a long time. And for the elite eight, the locker room is open for a long time. Plus they have each starter. Each starter gets a breakout room mm-hmm. and you go into their breakout room and they're there for like 40 minutes or a half hour or something like that. Caleb's breakout room will be a circus, oh, yeah, can an you absolute imagine? circus. Can and it'll imagine? be the kind of deal where you, you may not be able to get in there. Mm-hmm. And everyone's going to be asking the same questions and they're going to be asking all the Tar Heels the same questions. It'll be all about Caleb and it won't be about the matchup or how the teams have played up to that point or anything like that. So, yeah, that's great drama, great TV. I love storylines because yeah, sometimes they write themselves. Elite story, but like man, that. that's that's. Let's see how many ways we can write about Caleb and Carolina <laughs> but before we nauseate ourselves and nauseate our audience. Be so. seven thousand stories about Caleb Love and his connection to North Carolina if that matchup ends up happening. But again, 
would be fantastic, fantastic uh, drama and fantastic. You know, it's what makes sports so great when little things like that happen. It'd be a great matchup too. I think both. I think just looking at the matchup too would be a very interesting one. Just be outside of it, will not they even get there? Caleb Love, yeah. So, but will they get a lot of there? things will have to happen. There? Yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of will things have to there? happen before that before that matchup. Uh, I'm not convinced. I'll say it right now. I'm not convinced Arizona gets that far. Yeah, you were saying that off camera a little bit. I, you, you're like, I don't think that matchup like, happens. Yeah. I, I, I have to look at the bracket. Forgive me. I rarely ever do this, but because hey, pull it up. I've got to pull it up right this. in front of myself too. So yeah. Well, let's see real fast. God, I hate doing this. This is so bad. To, we just have to read something they, here. The Arizona plays Long Beach State would have to play Dayton or Nevada winner after that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, potentially I Arizona like, Clemson in the Sweet Sixteen. That could be interesting. I don't know. I think Baylor's good. Yeah. You would expect Baylor to get there, and I think that'd be a- Arizona is by far the best team on that side of the bracket. There's no doubt yeah. about it. But yeah. they look like a team that could go out early. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. great defensively. They, they get a little helter skelter too much. I think Dayton is a kind of team that could that could take advantage of that. I think Clemson can because of its experience. Uh, Baylor clearly can, and and quite frankly, so can New Mexico. They're good. Mm-hmm. I mean, no matter, yeah. don't everyone's gonna. Chalk Clemson moving forward. Don't be surprised if the Tigers lose to the Lobos. There's some good no. teams down there. So we don't know if Arizona will get there. I know that Carolina's side of the bracket, there's some interesting teams there, but I think that that's pretty favorable for the Tar Heels. Yeah, I think it is too. And I mentioned a few seconds ago, the third seed being Baylor and the fourth seed being Alabama. Carolina potentially could play Alabama in the Sweet 16. Obviously, that could be a pretty intriguing matchup. But I do agree with you. I think when you break it down, it is a pretty favorable region for the Tar Heels. Just to talk about that potential two game, obviously Carolina has to get past the winner of Howard and Wagner first in the opening round, but that potential second round game, which will be on Saturday in Charlotte, Mississippi state and Michigan state, decent amount of common opponents, particularly between North Carolina and Mississippi state with Mississippi state, uh, having lost to Georgia tech this year, a team that Carolina lost to obviously in Atlanta, Mississippi state did beat Tennessee twice. Carolina, you know, whooped Tennessee early in the year in Chapel Hill did lose to Kentucky twice a team Carolina lost to earlier in the year. And then Carolina way back when feels like 17 years ago when Carolina played uh, Arkansas earlier in the season in November um, and Mississippi state beat Arkansas as well. Not as many on the side of Michigan state, really the only one I could see at least when skimming through it was Michigan state lost to Duke in the third game of the season earlier this year. So, I think that matchup, though, could be a very intriguing. I do think that could be a little bit of a tricky one. I think Mississippi State's a, a physical team, not a vintage Michigan State by any means. They've been struggling particularly recently uh, over the last couple of weeks. I know you had a stat that I can't remember about some yeah. of their recent losses being pretty poor. Yeah, I, I that's a, a that's an interesting matchup, AJ. That's an interesting matchup yeah. right there. We're doing. We're going a little unconventional here today because all this stuff is new, but I banged out some notes on both these teams. I'm going to read them. That's yeah, you should yeah, read, read them stuff off, on, on these. Read them off. Uh, Michigan State notes, they have three losses in the last three weeks, teams that are not in the field. Yeah, that's what it was. So yeah. they have a tendency to be awful. Mm-hmm. But they have a tendency to chew you up and do pretty well. But there are a few things that are about them. I think their record is 20 and 14. There are some so. things about that them up. that aren't as Izzo-like as most Izzo teams. That's one reason they have so many losses. Uh, they're not terrible offensively, but they can be ugly at times. They're number 57 in Ken Palm and adjusted offensive efficiency, mm-hmm. which is not bad. But I think what that does is it's that's that reflects some really good games they've had. And then kind of evening things out, some pretty awful games they've had. Uh, they're always good on defense, but they're not as good this year. They struggle in the perimeter. They, 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 they're not great defending the three. They're not uh, a great rebounding team as they usually are. And as I said before, Carolina's history, I've seen Michigan State in a tournament a lot against Carolina in in my career. You go back to Carolina beat them in 98 Mm -hmm. in the Sweet 16, I think it was. And then they beat UConn in the regional finals uh, in in North Carolina. I covered, see, the final four in 05. Uh, mm-hmm. Second round in Winston Salem in 07. That was uh, when Bobby Knight's team was there that weekend. That was an interesting press conference. <laughs> <laughs> I can Carolina, Carolina be, played them twice in 09, beat the crap out of them at at uh, Ford Field, the mm-hmm. dome where the Lions play, in a game they played in December. And then the national championship was in that same 
arena and Carolina beat the crap out of them then too in the championship game. I don't believe they've played since. I know they could have played in 06. In fact, I'm going, I'm dating myself here, but (laughs) 06 was Dayton the first weekend. Carolina played Murray state Mm -hmm. and Michigan state played George Mason and George Mason beat Michigan state. And then George Mason upset Mm -hmm. Carolina in the second round. Mason got to the final four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Michigan state just doesn't want to see Carolina in the same building. It doesn't work out well. No. And here we go. And here we go again. It's been a while, but here we go again. So I honestly don't uh, Mississippi state very quickly. Some of the notes I took um, they're okay. Offensively. Uh, they they don't shoot the three very well. So in a league that scores a crap load of points, they're not one of those teams that's going to put 95 on you like seemingly half the other rest of the league does. Very good defensively. The number six overall, Ken Palm defending the three. Uh, they're a very good offensive rebounding team. They're uh, at a well above average defensive rebounding team. So they're gonna they're gonna grind you up a little bit more. I think Michigan State's a better matchup for Carolina. I think Carolina can out talent them. And I just see Michigan State being the kind of team that goes into an eight-minute drought. Mississippi State could have droughts, but I think Mississippi State, you know, they, they've shown that they can beat really good teams this mm-hmm. year. And Michigan State hasn't really you, – you, Mississippi State beat Tennessee twice, you said? Yes, Mississippi State beat, beat Tennessee twice and like a lost to Kentucky twice. A little bit of a mixed bag with common opponents. Yeah, well, yeah, um, they it, pounded it, it, them just a few days ago. So, yeah, Miss, I think Mississippi State's a better team. Mm-hmm. Even though Michigan will wear the white, I believe, in that 8-9 game. I think Michigan – who's the 8 and who's the 9? Uh, Mississippi State is the uh, is the 8 seed in Michigan. Okay, is, so they'll be in the yeah, white jersey. Michigan All State's right. Nine, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I kind of like Michigan, uh, Mississippi State getting out of that game, and I like Me Carolina too. against Mississippi State. Now, yeah. they could give them some problems. Let's remember the last time Carolina was in Charlotte in the NCAA tournament, it was 2018, and an SEC team with similar colors, Texas A&M, dominated the Tar Heels on the boards and eliminated them in the second round, Joel Berry's last game. Mm-hmm. So uh, I see Carolina getting through. Yeah. It, it, again, this is a favorable bracket. And if Seth Davis is right, and that's a ginormous if, okay, and they meet Grand Canyon in the Sweet 16, that'll be pretty cool because Bryce Drew uh, and Grand Canyon actually is pretty decent, but that would be pretty wild if Carolina and it's t- in the last two tournaments we get a St. Peter's in a regional final and a Grand Canyon in a Sweet 16. I don't know if I see that happening. I got to look at the bracket here, but I don't think I see that happening. Yeah, I, 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 can see, I see Alabama getting out of that and. Yeah, yeah Alabama I, playing I, I, would, I would love to see if Carolina could put 100 on Alabama because Alabama is quite indifferent to the idea of playing defense a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah, no, you're 100% right on that. But yeah, I think, you know, a consensus here, and I think I've seen a majority of Carolina fans feeling pretty favorable about the bracket too, or about the region, excuse me, too. And again, I, I agree with that. Before we head out, AJ, let's talk about Carolina a little bit, stay a little specific on them. We hit on the loss to NC State last night, really poor performance, worst performance of the season for the Tar Heels. Uh, we hit on that on our three things that we put out. If you haven't seen that, go watch that after this one, obviously. Um, so we don't need to sit here and break down the game again, but I think it's worth talking about now because, you know, Carolina coming off a disappointing loss to State, think that would be a little bit of motivation hey you know going into the tournament we talked about last night of maybe that's a little bit of a wake-up call for the Tar Heels like okay if we play like this again season's gonna be over we have to be a lot better than that going into the NCAA tournament but I think when you look at Carolina starting off in Charlotte should feel good about that I think when you look at the region you should feel good about that (laughs) should you feel good about the Tar Heels right now AJ well, um, yeah, because I don't think last night has any bearing on anything. It was the second straight night. They didn't have a third score. That's mm-hmm. not what you want. If this was a regular season, we'd say, hmm, well, you get a third score in a third straight game. If they don't, then that becomes a trend. Mm-hmm. And that would be a little bit concerning. I wouldn't be concerned if that happens in the opening game against Wagner or Howard because they're going to they're going to win. I, I just, there's no way this team loses to either one of them. Although let's remember, I'm the guy that said there was no way NC state would win the ACC tournament. So yeah, never say never, never say never. <laughs> what in tarnation do I know? Yeah. 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 What do you know? Man? <laughs> but I could be pretty, Wagner has seven scholarship players left and, and Howard be happy to be there. I've mm-hmm. been to a couple of games at Bird gymnasium at Howard in DC. In fact, the Howard university hospital on Georgia Avenue, which I know well, 
and grew up in that area is where old Griffith Stadium was, where the Senators, Washington Senators baseball oh, team wow. plays. Mm-hmm. And the longest ever home run recorded in baseball history was a 565-foot shot by Mickey Mantle at Griffith Stadium. And there's a little marker in the parking lot at the oh, Howard wow. University Hospital where that ball landed. Oh, that's fantastic. Only so you if you're know. ever in D.C. and you, you meander up north up George Avenue and you see the hospital, take a take a turn in there and you'll see that little market. That's pretty cool. That's a fun fact right there. That's what you yeah. get here. <laughs> hey, absolutely. I also played, played ball in high school football with a guy who played at Howard, too. So I like bison. Howard. That's cool. I, bison, yeah, I, ho- I hope. Look, I'm, I'm going to say I hope the bison wins you because I want to see the bison show up. That's cool. Yeah, I love it. Howard love Bison. It. I love so it. Tar Heels won't have any problem there. And um I don't think that we'll be able to gauge a whole lot uh, on that. I, I'm just, I'm not going to put too much into last night. If anything, this is what's crazy. And this is why I think conference tournaments for the power leagues are going away. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're the ACC, would you rather NC state be marching in the tournament or Pitt? Yeah. Look, all due respect to what state just did, but Pitt's Pitt's a better team. Yeah, they've shown that over the two season. And a half. Yeah, over the course they've shown of the season, that over yeah. the season, and mm-hmm. state bumps them out because Pat gets hot in five days, which mm-hmm. again doesn't happen very often. So kudos to them with a thousand exclamation marks. But I see it going away because Carolina got a number one seed. The players were upset. I was walking through the tunnel, basically with the team last night after mm-hmm. the game because I was hurrying to get back to the press room and I couldn't go the other way, so I had to go that way. And there was not a peep. The only thing I could hear other than feet was Jeff Lebo was like, was unfolding the post game stats or some stats or a piece of paper or something. And that's, and he was like maybe six people in front of me, six people lengths in front of me. That's the only thing I heard. They were upset. They were disappointed. And the vibe I got in the locker room talking to a bunch of them was they were not as upset over the fact that they lost as they were over how they lost, Mm -hmm. which if you're a Carolina fan, I think that's a big positive because they're not going to dwell on not winning as much as they're going to dwell on, Hey, look what we allowed to happen. They're, they're going to give, they gave kudos to state, but man, they allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right approach. So my column that that I wrote at two three Mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning was about the purging. Okay, maybe they needed one more purging, mm-hmm. and they got it. That doesn't mean that they're going to roll through the tournament, but sometimes we need reminders. Sometimes we need a little dose of reality to bring us back down to earth, so to speak. I'm going cliches again, man. I'm cliche you love them cliches here lately. <laughs> you're running off fumes. No. You've been you haven't slept in four days, barely. So I mean, you're running no, I have. I, well, that's that's <laughs> the thing, man. I'm not going to sleep until when's the spring game. Football April game? 20th, 20th. Yeah. April 20th. I'll get a little, I'll get some naps in after the basketball run ends, but, but anyway, but, but I like the cliches right now. Cause I've decided to make it uh part of the shtick here for a couple of weeks. I'm, yeah, cliche I'm, the crap out of, I'm clicheing the crap out of every one of these things, man. <laughs> so I don't think it matters. I don't think how they played last night matters other than the positive they can learn from it. The conference tournaments should not be played. If a team is not that, I'm not going to say they weren't disappointed. The fan base is divided. Half the fan base is furious that they lost. Half the fan base is like, eh, the last four national championship teams at Carolina did not win the ACC tournament. So eh, no big deal. Because 24 hours after, not even 24 hours after they lost, the game ended at almost 11. So you're talking uh, 19 hours Yeah, 18, after 19, they lost. Mm-hmm. They're like, eh. That's in the rearview mirror. Let's look ahead to Howard Wagner, Michigan State, Mississippi State. Yeah. It's like what happened last night didn't even matter anymore. It has no mm-hmm. bearing on anything. Mm-hmm. How about if you're Wisconsin? These guys haven't even showered yet from their game today, and, and whatever happened against Illinois doesn't matter. If, can you imagine covering that? Yeah, it'd be so stories weird. Stories about that game. Yeah, they shouldn't have a game played that late. Yeah, I don't know why they don't play that Mississippi earlier. I mean, it's got to do with TV, of course. Dude, it's all they TV. Should play the game. They should play the game earlier. It makes no sense. Yeah, in other words, conference tournaments don't matter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm on for these teams. I'm on par with you on that. I mean, I've, I was, for me, I've said it all. I've said it over the last couple of weeks, said it on a few podcasts, the biggest barometer of a team and how good they are is what they do throughout a 20 game regular season. I've just always found it fascinating that, you know, the conference tournament champion is the champion of the ACC. And, you know, the, the outright champion isn't necessarily recognized like that. But for me, that is 
that's that's the barometer. If, if, if you can do it through a 20 game marathon, that is a better barometer of the success you've had of a season instead of getting hot in March and winning a tournament or winning five games like state get again, got to give state credit because they 100 percent deserve it. They were absolutely fantastic, especially look at who they beat in the tournament. But I, I agree with you, man. I, I just think when you look at where Carolina is right now. You can't take too much from that game. State had to win that game to get into the term. It was exceptionally hot. And AJ, I don't think I said it last night, but I was talking to a, I was talking to a Carolina fan earlier today about it. And I said, there was a few shots in the first half that state hit where the, you'll probably remember these where the ball kind of bounced around the rim a few times we're talking about, yeah. and goes in. And it's like, I remember, I remember sitting on the couch watching the game and I was like, yeah, it's just one of them. It's just one of them runs for state. Uh, they couldn't lose this game if they tried, and it's what it ultimately ended up uh, feeling yeah, yeah. like. So can't take too there much. There was that. that. I agree. I agree with you. There was that, and there was DJ Burns' first three pointer of his five year college yeah, career. Yeah, that goes in, and you know, having seen State play a lot this season too, AJ, there were just guys doing stuff that they weren't doing that in the regular season. But you know what That's it is? AJ? Three that Morsell hit too. Yeah. After yeah. the really bad pass by Cormac at 67, mm-hmm. 62. Mm-hmm. And then Morsell had a beautiful three from the left wing, made it 70, 62. That was one of the nails in the coffin. And by the way, so people understand the NCAA doesn't declare who it takes as the automatic bid. The conferences do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, and the reason the conferences do that is because if there's no automatic bid at stake, then why play the tournament? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, no, it, it, there's so, no point if there's no bid. No, you're 100% exactly. right. But that's the beauty of March. I mean, you have to, again, you have to give a lot of credit to state. And the run that state made for me was kind of like, all right, yeah, we're in March now. This is what it's about. Yeah. It's just about getting hot at the right time. That's that's really all it is from here on out. I'm going to talk to the other side of my mouth here for a second. I think one of the good things about there being a tournament is Carolina had its tight on the stage moment last night. Yep. Mm-hmm. So now they, so if they would have rolled and won, they wouldn't have had that moment yet. And if that moment were to occur here in the next couple of weeks, it would be doing, it would be happening for the first time with this group. Yeah. Now it's already happened. Now they'll know how to, they'll be able to recognize it sooner that he, here comes the tightness. It's like this plume coming towards you plume of tightness, and you can recognize it a little bit sooner and figure out a way to avoid it. And last night, the plume enveloped them. It would, they were very clearly tight the last 10, 12 minutes of that game and got increasingly so. That's why they missed 12 straight shots and they missed 15 out of 16. That that doesn't happen to a club this talented unless it's tight. Not Everybody is not that off at one time. It was mm-hmm. tightness. State had something to do with it, but the heels were tight. So they got tightness in March on a neutral court in a meaningful game with a split crowd. They got it out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the way you have to kind of look at it and approach it. And again, when you look at the history of North Carolina teams winning national champions, like we've said, it feels like a million times over the last 24 hours, last four national champions for Carolina didn't win the ACC tournament either. So I think Carolina fans should be feeling pretty good about the NCAA tournament ahead. All right, Edge, before we head out and put you on the spot here, do you think does Carolina get Carolina hit reach the final four? Do they win the West region? What's your yeah. prediction for that? I kind of figured you would ask that. And I'm looking at it right now. I think we should do another fuller tournament pod should we have more time to divulge maybe we could bring a couple staffers on do like a little group thing yeah, yeah get david on oh. here too especially that'd be cool oh get david on here i think bryant might be pretty good but yeah, yeah kevin yeah. if kevin comes on here all i'm gonna want to do is troll him <laughs> so that would be counterproductive but um th- the great kevin roy everybody yeah shout out kevin roy i think carolina beats mississippi state um uh, they're probably, I think okay, I'm not a go chalk guy because there's just too many even teams. Mm-hmm. I think Alabama, I, they beat Alabama. And then I'm going to go. Maybe an upset right on that now, of the bracket. I'm going to change. Yeah, I'm going to change this possibly. This is just right now. So don't go holding me accountable for it. Tomorrow night, maybe we'll do one where I'm more accountable. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm going to go Dayton in the regional final. Okay. I like that. A oh, rematch of the 2010 NIT championship, by the way. Uh huh. Exactly. No, I like that. I, I, there's, there's always going to be an upset. There, there is. It's so hard to predict. It's the hardest thing in the world. So uh, yeah, I think I think this out. is set up for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are Carolina's built to advance. Other than last night, they've 
played for the most part advancing type of basketball on nights that they don't play very well they still do a lot of things you need to do the fact that it was 61 58 last night with uh, what was it uh, eight minutes left mm-hmm. 802 left and on the court if you didn't know what the score was you would have thought state was up 12 to 15 mm-hmm. so even when carolina didn't have enough heart to quote seth trimble and didn't bring their nasty, again, to quote Seth Trimble, and by the way, I'm stealing that from him. (laughs) He refers to them playing defense the way that they normally do as having their nasty. That's a pretty cool way to call it. So they didn't have their nasty. Maybe they had nasty, but it wasn't nasty he's talking about. Yeah, it wasn't nasty enough. And they were still down down three. So I think they're going to bring all that stuff with them to Charlotte, and they're going to take it out to L.A., and I think they're going to get to Phoenix. Yeah. I agree with you. I think I think this team, like you said, I think this team is built for a run. We've seen a lot of really good performances from this team, particularly in, in this half of the season as well. Like I said, winning the outright AC season, ACC uh, regular season title, beating Duke twice. I mean, they've had some really, really good wins this season. I think this Carolina team is poised for a run. I, I'm, I think it's more out of hope than anything because it, it probably won't happen because there's always an upset on one side of the, somewhere in here. I think Carolina and Arizona are playing in that elite eight. I'm, I'm hoping. I, I know you don't want to cover that. I know you don't want to write well, no, a thousand Caleb I'm just, stories. I'm but I need, just I need complaining. That I need that matchup. I do. I Jacob, I'm just, com- I'm just complaining for the sake of complaining. That's all. <laughs> I've been you a great. Look, the, be I had some. I had some incidents in in DC with you know stuff that. Just put me in a real complaining mode. So. <laughs> oh, I get it, man. Trust me, I get I mean, it. I, I, I'm just gonna complain. I'm gonna. I'm just going to complain. <laughs> you know what? That would be such an awesome spectacle. And to be perfectly that? honest with you, like I said earlier, it would be great to see Caleb. I, I got along great with Caleb. Had a, mm-hmm. I've had a really good rapport with him. Uh, he, I thought he was always honest. He was always forthright. I don't think he ever BSed when, when I talked to him. It was just time to go different ways, and it worked out for everybody involved, and which is the best part of this story. I, I, I think that people hopefully would embrace the story with love, no pun intended, because it worked out for everyone. It worked out mm-hmm. for everyone. And you can never, ever, ever, ever take that shot away. You cannot take that moment away. Mm-hmm. Can't no, take you it can't. away. You can't. It's etched in stone forever. That shot will be hanging up somewhere in the Dean Dome or whatever arena they end up playing in in 30 years from now and in the Carolina basketball offices forever. Mm-hmm. Rightly so. Amazing, amazing, amazing shot and amazing, amazing game for, for so many different regions, AJ. But we'll, I think we can go ahead and, and, and head out of here. We've talked a lot of NCAA tournament here. We've talked a lot of Carolina. We've broken down the west side, west region, excuse me, of the this NCAA tournament. I think it's March is always fun. And, you know, I guess for Carol, for, for all the Carolina fans out there, they'll be, they'll be praying that they'll be playing in April as well. So fun, fun month ahead. Well, I guess not a month, fun few weeks ahead, I should say. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones, another edition of the Tar Heel Illustrated podcast. Let's do this. I haven't asked for likes in the last two videos. I'm a little upset about it because I just completely forgot about it. How much you want on this one, AJ? How much you want on this one? Maybe 300 likes, 400? Yeah, I, I aim high, man. I like that. No, I, I like that. I like you going a little bit higher than I do. I'm asking for three. AJ's asking for four. Let's see if we can hit that 400 mark. Like the video below if you're if you're feeling good about this West region for North Carolina. And like this video below if you think Carolina is going to make a deep, deep run in this NCAA tournament. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell too. And AJ, it wouldn't be right if we didn't have a little quick shameless plug in here. Head on over to the website, tarhillistrade.com. Links in the description below. Sign up for just 833 a month because I don't know if you guys know, but somehow spring football starts tomorrow. How, how did that happen? That just comes out of nowhere like a free train. Brown at 10 a.m. Practice Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. And after I file, I'm heading to Charlotte. <laughs> it's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it, and go subscribe, subscribe because there'll be a ton of inside information. Plus, exactly. I gotta pay. For, I gotta pay for. Here's what. Here's the deal, guys. If Carolina Carolina wins the region. I'm probably just staying out there and renting a car and driving to Phoenix, which is six true. Grand. I've made that drive before because it, 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 I'm not coming back that Sunday because it's Easter Sunday. It's going to be chaos. Yeah, no point. 
total don't chaos. Attempt that. So, don't even attempt that, and then yeah. if I come back Monday, what's the point of flying home cross country Monday to mm -hmm. have to turn around Wednesday morning and fly to Phoenix because the media stuff at the Final Four begins Thursday? Mm -hmm. So you got to be there Wednesday. So what's the point coming home for one day, flying all back and forth around the country? So I would just stay out there. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. I mean, it costs, no it costs money. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a it's a flight out there to LA, man. That's not a not exactly a hop skip and jump. That's a little little ways away. Yeah, and it's expensive staying out there too. Yeah, and the car yeah. run will be outrageous. Yeah, oh god. And, and see, I've told you before how much things. It's fun covering a team making a run because it's it ain't it's, cheap. Though, I mean, it's, covering a final <laughs> four is great. Covering the Final Four is great. Regional finals are awesome. The buzz in the building, all that stuff. I love that kind of stuff. But, mm. man, is it pricey. Yeah, it is. It is. Now, you, we, you've you told me a little bit about that. Now, I believe it, man. It's just you, when you think about the longevity of it and just where you potentially have to go. And, you know, if you're going to a big city for a Final Four, I'm sure they're jacking up them hotel prices, too. There's a little bit of that in there, too. So, yeah, it, it all plays a factor this time of year. But, I mean, Carolina fans. You have to get flights at the last minute. You have to get yeah, exactly. flights at the last minute. And they're a lot That's more true. expensive. So That's true. I didn't think about no, that. I would say no complaining, but I am complaining because I'm sorry, complaining. man. This is com com well, two C double C's today, cliches and complaining. <laughs> I love it, man. That's a great way to wrap up this podcast, guys. We appreciate y'all watching as always. We'll see y'all in the next one. And uh, thanks. Thanks.